Thanks for tuning in to our second episode of History with a Twist. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Caroline. Today we want to share with you what the film industry was like in Jacksonville at the turn of the 20th century. And don't worry, we'll end with a Hollywood-style cocktail recipe for you to try on your own. What if I told you that in addition to being dubbed Harlem of the South, Jacksonville once earned a reputation as the first Hollywood and the winter film capital of the world? It's true. In the early 1900s, our beloved Bold City was considered a worldwide entertainment hub. Of course, as we can all tell, Jacksonville is clearly not Hollywood. So what made this city so desirable in the first place? And why don't we live in a star-studded metropolis today? We'll get to these questions later. Don't let me lose my focus. It will all become very clear as we zoom in on early 20th century Jacksonville. As I was saying, lights, camera, action. During this time, the motion picture industry found its footing in New York City. But as restrictions were put in place to try and control movie production and screening rights, independent filmmakers quickly began to seek out alternative locations. Many production companies began making their way to warmer waters in the South. Filmmakers got wind of Jacksonville and were swiftly drawn to its warm climate, exotic settings, diverse architecture, and easy railway access. The city's political climate at the time readily favored the growing film industry as a way to stimulate local economy after the Great Fire of 1901. Film producers in search of new inspirations and creative freedom, combined with Jacksonville's enthusiasm to support a local business boom, launched a sensational venture that would last nearly 20 years. To start, let's take it back to 1908, when the first permanent studio opened in the Talleyrand area of Jacksonville under the name Calum Studios. Within the next 10 years, over 30 silent film companies would follow suit. Joseph Engel opened Metro Studio and filmed the first ever feature-length movie in Technicolor, The Gulf Between, which would become an industry standard for years to come. Of course, we would be remiss if we did not mention the contributions of Jacksonville resident and filmmaker Richard Norman. In 1920, he purchased Eagle Studios in the Arlington District and reopened it under the name Norman Laboratories. It was here at his home and creative complex that he began producing silent films with all African-American casts. These actors starred as the aspirational heroes, businessmen, and pilots, instead of the stereotypical roles Black actors played in other silent films, such as the villain or sidekick. One of Norman's most successful full-length films, The Flying Ace, was inspired by America's first female African-American pilot, Bessie Coleman. Coleman was familiar with Norman's work, and it was believed she wanted to discuss with him a movie idea about her life while she was in Jacksonville. Fate did not grant them this meeting. Coleman tragically died during a rehearsal for an aerial show. When the film was released in 1926, it was labeled as the greatest airplane thriller ever. The Flying Ace is the only known surviving film of Richard Norman's, and its very existence is owed to Bessie Coleman and her legacy. All in all, more than 300 silent films were produced on the banks of the St. John's River during this time. Production skits were staged all over town. The camera started rolling, and many producers embraced rather unconventional and reckless approaches to capturing footage. On several accounts, audacious filmmakers called on false alarms so fire trucks would dispatch and add some notable heat to their films probably pretty annoying for a city that was still in recovery from a devastating fire. Really, though? There are even reports of filmmakers placing misleading ads in local newspapers to lure mass gatherings so they could avoid paying actor salaries. Sometimes, residents became so confused by the theatrics of burning houses, runaway vehicles, mob scenes, and bank robberies that they jumped into the live action to try and take matters into their own hands. The silent film era in Jacksonville marks a period in time when creativity and local talent thrived. But chaos and disruption quickly followed, leading to the demise of the film industry here. I mean, 
How many times can he put up with false fire alarms and ridiculous stunts in the middle of the streets? Yes, but there's always more to the story. The industry fizzled with a combination of economic depression, a war that drafted actors and crew, and, yes, the weariness of locals dealing with the destructive antics of filmmakers. Yet at the same time, Hollywood was also growing from a small township into a huge city, and soon Jacksonville just couldn't compete. During this time, John W. Martin ran for mayor, pledging to rid the city of two evils, brothels and film studios. Martin won, and with a perfect storm of circumstances, by 1920, almost all the studios had relocated to a new home called Hollywood. Today, the film industry still lives on. Multiple film festivals are hosted annually, showcasing local filmmaking talent, including the Jacksonville 48-Hour Film Project and the LOL Jacks Film Festival, now held here at Mosh. While the Hollywood takeover of Jacksonville may have ended, we can still relax like movie stars with our featured cocktail. The Silver Screen is our take on a Mary Pickford cocktail. Mary Pickford was a silent film actress who had a rum-based drink named after her while on a trip to Cuba. While similar to a Mary Pickford, the Silver Screen embodies the tropical flavors associated with Florida during the early 20th century. Featuring Havana Club White Rum, bottled by local Jacksonville brand Bacardi, this drink also includes pineapple juice, orange liqueur, and a splash of grenadine, for a classic-looking cocktail you can lounge with like a true celebrity. If you don't have all these ingredients, channel your inner silent film director and improvise. Any cocktail you create will taste just as great. Share your version of the drink and tag us with at Jacks. Thank you to everyone who helped us make this episode possible. From Norman Studios and the Jacksonville Historical Society to our very own Mosh Crew. Cheers! Thanks for tuning in to History with a Twist. Keep a lookout for future episodes and tasty cocktail recipes brought to you by Mosh Connect. If there's any local history you'd like to learn more about, send us a message at info at themosh.org. All of our content is available for free at themosh.org slash educate slash connect. If you enjoyed this show, Show your support and make a donation so we can continue to create programs like this. And if you haven't already, follow us on social media at Moss Jacks to stay connected. Until next time. <laughs>